I wanted to be at Texas State. Uh, I chose to be at Texas State. Uh, I'm from Texas. That was important to me. Um, I always knew if the right guy got this job, you better watch out. You better watch out. This is Win Now or Get Bent, episode 167. If you don't already know, I'm Kev Tardello, coming to you on Tuesday, September 10th. And we've got a quick turnaround. Got a game coming up on Thursday. That's right, a special Tuesday edition of the preview with this short week. The Tech State Bobcats are hosting the Arizona State Sun Devils at UFCU Stadium. Third game in a row they're hosting at home. That's a nice luxury for these Bobcats. It'll be 7 p.m. prime time on ESPN. Be there if you can. They need another sellout crowd, so be there if you can. We'll be there. Win now or get bent. We'll be there as a unit, of course. We're going to be there. I'll be there. The wizard, Zachary Webb, will be there. And our great intern, Reese Largent, will be there. He's also here. We're doing a preview episode with our guy, Reese Largent, our great intern. His debut on the Win Now or Get Bent podcast. I'm excited for you guys to hear from, from our great intern. He's been doing awesome stuff on our Patreon page. We're going to be doing a lot more stuff with Reese. So look out for that. It can't be just all me all the time, you know? And you, even I'm getting tired of listening to me. Oh, man, lots to talk about these Bobcats. We'll, we'll go over the game a little bit, and then we'll get into Reese. That's the real meat of the pod, so we'll power through this, this little beginning part. But before we get to Reese and the Bobcats, this episode is brought to you by First Lockhart National Bank. As the largest financial institution headquartered in Caldwell County, First Lockhart National Bank expanded to San Marcos in 2018 and opened a state-of-the-art branch on Hunter Road in 2020. For the past six years, FLNB has provided a wide range of financial services that have significantly improved the quality of life for the San Marcos community and beyond. Whether you need personal or business checking accounts, business loans, or home mortgages, they've got you covered. Plus, they offer innovative services like video banking, business banking, and top-of-the-line mobile banking app. FLNB is also a huge supporter of Tech State football, standing out as one of the largest initial investors in NIL deals for Bobcats players. Be sure to follow them on Twitter, X, at First Lockhart, and on Instagram, at First Lockhart. Shout out to our guy, Gil Hodges, Senior Vice President at FLNB in MLS number 247565, a proud Tech State grad and a diehard fan. We are thrilled to be partnering with Gil and FLNB all season long. You can find them at 2507 Hunter Road. That's 2507 Hunter Road, or give them a call at 512 504 7422. Again, that's 512 504 7422. First Lockhart National Bank member FDIC, equal housing lender. Terms and conditions may vary. Hey, Bobcat Nation. Looking for your next real estate move? McNabb and Company Real Estate Services has been proudly Bobcat owned and operated for over 15 years. They're your go to team for buying, selling, investing, and managing properties and everything in between. Whether you're a fan or an alum, they've got, they've got the local expertise and full-service support you need. Call them today at 512-667-9129. That's 512-667-9129. Or visit their website, mcnabandco.com. That's M-C-N-A-B-B, mcnabandco.com. McNabb and Company, where Bobcats find their home. Give them a follow on Instagram, Facebook, and X. At McNabb and Co. M C N A B B McNabb and Co. Shout out to Monica over at McNabb and Co. One of the truest Bobcats out there, a day one supporter of Texas State Athletics, and now she's supporting this pod. Can't thank her enough. And McNabb and Company Real Estate Services. Check them out. McNabb and Co. on your social media services and McNabb and Co.com. M C N A B B McNabb. We are also brought to you by TGC LLC. Our good friends at TGC LLC. You can check them out at thegalindocollective.com. That's G A L I N D O, thegalindocollective.com. A team of professional consultants dedicated to helping others realize their business potential through people, planning, and practice. Their services cover a wide range of areas such as business strategy, marketing, human resources, and financial planning. If you own property or a business and want to maximize its profitability, contact TGC at thegalindocollective.com and follow their social media platforms on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, 
at TGC underscore LLC and at the Galindo Collective on Instagram and Facebook. Shout out to my guy, Rick Galindo, a true Tech State sicko, a Tech State grad, been with us through since last season, got us all through the off season, got us to Sunbelt Media Day in New Orleans, and he's with us for this 2024 season. And TGC and Rick Galindo are bringing you tickets for our ticket giveaway contest. We did one last week. We are doing another one this week. Last week, it was usually a Twitter uh, a Twitter contest, but if you're listening to this, you are in the contest. So just shoot us an email at wnogbkef at gmail.com. Again, that's wnogbkeff at gmail.com. I know some of you, there's about six of you, sent emails for the contest last week. I made sure to enter you in there. If you do it again, I'll get you back in there. Shout out to our guy, Diego, who won him last time. Looked like he had an awesome time. Got to talk to him, and he had a blast. They're great seats, too. Great club seats. You have a, a great view and everything. So get in on that contest, you know, or what we're doing for, for our, our Twitter followers is you have to subscribe to the pod. So if you do send an email and you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, do me a favor, log on there, sign in, create a YouTube account if you don't have one. Just just give us a, a good little subscription on YouTube, Win Now or Get Bent on YouTube. Uh, one more right here for chillsy.com. Our good friends at chillsy.com. You can get custom tumblers like this one I'm holding up on our YouTube channel, Win Now or Get Bent. Like, subscribe, comment. You can see this custom Win Now or Get Bent tumbler on chillsy.com. If you order six or more of these, punch in Bobcats at your checkout. They are $15 a piece, which is a great deal. But the real fun stuff that Chillsy's doing with us are the koozies bam if you're looking on the on the youtube channel you can see me holding up these beautiful koozies we will be handing these out at the game on thursday if you'll be there and if you see me i'll be handing them out but if you see me i'm not offering you one say give me a win now or get bent and i'll, I'll get you one of these koozies no doubt about it shout out to my guy dennis redding a true tech state sicko tech state grad Got to meet him and his son Bryson last week. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm sure they'll be back Thursday. It's a weird game Thursday night, but hopefully I get to to run into them again. I'm sure Bryson has school, so you may not be able to stay up that late, bud. But you can you can be with us in spirit if you're not there in person. But shout out again to chillzy.com. C-H-I-L-L-Z-E-Y dot com. All right. And I have one more real quick free plug. This is a free plug. I'm gonna pepper into our our ad reads. It's for our, our our good friends at the Texas State FCA, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. They do a lot of great things at Texas State. They are having a, a 2024 Ty Harrington Texas State FCA Golf 4 Bobcats. The 4 is spelled F-O-R-E, like 4 for golf. That is going to be this Friday, September 13th, 2024 at the Kissing Tree Golf Club, a 1 o'clock tea time for this. This is a, a an event for the Texas State Fellowship of Christian Athletes, FCA. Uh, my, my my good buddy over there, Kent Pope, sent me an offer to, to come out. So I'm going to, you know, we're going to be working on the cinematic recap. We're going to be working on the recap episode. So I'm not going to be out there golfing, but I'm going to make sure to go out there, at least take some pictures, shake some hands, see my guy, Kent Pope, maybe Pat Ford over there at FCA. That's a great dude running that FCA, uh, the FCA here at Texas State. Same with Ty Harrington, former baseball coach here. I know he's putting it on, so that's a that's a pretty cool event. So go check it out if you can. I know they already have the most golfers they've ever had with 92, so a lot of golfers already signed up. So it should be a pretty big event. If you're around Kiss and Tree, come and check it out. I know I live not too far away from Kiss and Tree, so I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna pop in. But there you go. That was one one last one, one last one for the FCA. Long ad reads for this one, but that's okay because we're gonna we're gonna consolidate the what we're gonna talk about here so that we can get right to Reese. So we're going to talk about this game, this Arizona State game. Obviously, that UTSA game it was great. If you listen to episode 166, I had a great time talking all about it. Our guy, our great producer, the wizard, Zachary Webb, made an awesome cinematic recap on our YouTube channel. Go check that out. Uh, what, a, what a weekend. It was a great time, but we don't, we do, we don't, get, a, we don't get to celebrate it all week. We don't have a, a lot of time. we got to focus on a, a pretty big opponent Thursday night. Like Josh Eaton said, the, the UTSA, those are just little fishes in the way. Got, got, got bigger problems coming up later in the week. A much bigger opponent, a P4 opponent, primetime slated schedule on ESPN, national TV. 
It's a doozy. It's a big one. It will be interesting to see what this crowd will look like after they showed out in full force last Saturday. I mean, the loud crowd was creating delay of game penalties. It was doing a lot of a lot of crazy stuff. And so it's it's uh they're going to be needed again against a, a real formidable opponent in Arizona State. They're two and zero as well. They've looked really great. Um, I won't step too much on what Reese and I are talking about with that, but there there's a lot of similarities between these teams. They even both have really young coaches. Kenny Dillingham's actually younger than than GJ Kenny. I think he's thirty four. I mean, he may even be younger than that. Maybe thirty two. That that seems real young though. Uh, that's how that's how old I'm getting. Where that seems young, but it's going to be a a, a fascinating matchup on on Thursday night. It's uh, I mean, even Vegas has it about a two point game in favor of Arizona State. Which you would, you know, even though there was that that big win for Texas State, they are undefeated. Um, you would still anticipate a, a undefeated P four team that's coming to town would would be a little bit more favored. But that tells you even even the the experts who are in Vegas even believe this is going to be a, a pretty close one. Um, we got to speak to GJ Kinney at the Tuesday press conference. He had some interesting things to say, especially about Arizona State, and we talk about it with Reese. So I won't step on it too much, but he did say that this quarterback for Arizona State might be – he he kind of said it very matter-of-factly. This is this is the best quarterback they are going to face all season long. Young quarterback Sam Leavitt, Michigan State transfer for Arizona State. Uh, he only threw for 60 yards last week because they didn't they didn't have to rely on him. They they relied on their their running game more so than than leave it. But that's high praise coming from G.J. Kinney. Uh, even though they don't have a P4 on the schedule the rest of the year, that's still – that's still pretty high praise for coming from a guy who who played quarterback himself, and he he tends to he really prides himself on his quarterback expertise, and that's what his expertise going away with leave it giving him that high praise. So even though they've really got to gear up and, and stop Scadaboo, that's uh, uh, Scadabo. I'm probably saying his name wrong. Sorry about that, Cam. Uh, they they definitely have to have to put a, a bunch of dudes in the box to prepare for him, but. But leave it. He's a young guy, but he can still sling it. And and GJ Kinney, he didn't wouldn't throw that out flippantly. Um, even though it is a, a young quarterback, and we saw that didn't go well for a young quarterback last week. And Owen McCowan, that pressure seemed to get to him. That crowd got to him. We'll see how it goes for Leave it. He has a little bit, uh, you know, coming in from Michigan State. He has he's these big program experiences. So that will be interesting. Uh, it was great to talk with Reese because he man. He has a, such a great mind for this. Like when I when I talk with him off air, or, or you know, like last week we we hung out for a good while, waiting on waiting for some koozies before the game, which was nice because we got to we got to chat for a good while. Uh, and his his brain and his, and how he breaks these things down is is always really fascinating. So that's why I was glad he was able to dive into Arizona State, be able to pick his brain a, a little bit there. He's got a real analytic mindset. You know, I can be pretty meat potatoes when it comes to my analysis. This guy gets in gets in pretty deep with some of the the stuff he's talking about. So uh, it'll be great. We're gonna we're gonna be bringing Reese on a lot more. Uh, I said going into fall camp that I believe this team would be seven and or ten and two after the season ended. I had the, I had them losing to the two Alabama teams, those two road games, um, also games that are that are during the week. And it was a it felt pretty bold at the time for them to even get to this point and get over UTSA a hump that they weren't able to get over for for over twelve years. Um, that didn't seem like it, it. That was a. It seemed like a stretch at the time saying it. And now even looking at the Arizona State game, maybe it's a stretch again to believe in the Bobcats. But I do. I believe in this team. I feel like that was a huge moment for this program on on Saturday, as far as their confidence to look your rival in the face. And absolutely smack them into the ground. That's going to do a lot for for the psyche of these players, these coaches. It's going to to do a lot. And the one thing you do have to be concerned about is that hangover game, where it is a a, a turnaround um, that's going to be a, a lot to deal with. And I don't think, even though it is a young quarterback for Arizona State, I don't think he's it's going to have the same effect on him as it did McCowan. I think it will affect him, but I don't think it will be as effective. Um, so it'll be still a little bit of a closer game. Don't anticipate it being too high scoring. I hate doing the score prediction, but let's get a, sto- a score prediction in there. Um, give me the Bobcats. Let's, it's going to be a bit of a funky one. So I'm going to say 27-23 
that's what I'm anticipating. I'm hoping it's higher. I talked about that with Reese. It'd be fun if this was a, a a lot of fireworks in this game on a national stage and and you get to display that for the rest of the country. Um, the implications that could possibly have for the college football playoff selection. So that's uh, I would like for it to be a, a little crazier than that. But you know, Reese is with me too, right there in the twenties, right there. That's that's kind of where it's anticipated to 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 drop off at at least between between Reese and I. You know, I think we're both picking the Bobcats. I don't know if I asked him to pick a side. I didn't want to put too much on too. I didn't want to put him too much on the spot for his first time jumping on the pod. But uh, it's uh, I, I think it's going to be a, a really good game. You know, but I said I thought the last one was going to be a good game, and and it sure wasn't. It was a a, a very lopsided affair. So, um, either way, I I of course I want to see the game. I want to see this team against the P four team. But really, my I, I'm almost more anticipating the the show out. The fans, our fans, going to to turn out in full force because uh, it'll be needed. And can you and a full stadium. On national TV, on ESPN, boy, that would be something. That would be pretty great. I know Dr. Kelly Dampus, the great president here at Texas State, he's trying real hard, doing social media pushes, doing videos. It's going to be a blackout. They're going to hand out uh, uh, glow sticks and and have a whole bunch of fun stuff going on. Uh, he didn't fully, he didn't cancel classes on Friday, but that's okay. You know, that's it, it's still an educational institution. You know, he, he said it when he took the job. He had two goals, two main initiatives when he when he got brought on, turn Tech State into an R1 research university and and focus on that educational side and fix football. But the first one was the education side. So, you know, no, no Friday classes. Or you're gonna have to go to those Friday classes. Are they still labs? When I was in school, it was just Friday labs. I should ask Reese that. He just got done. He just graduated in August. It was Friday labs when I was in school, not actual full classes. So We'll see about that. You also have to miss that FCA golf tournament at Kiss and Tree on Friday. A little quick plug for them. Check that out. Go, go, go! Check out that that golf tournament. Maybe we'll see. I'll put a few koozies in my pocket. I'll save some back from Thursday night. If I see some of you, some of you sickos at that deal, I'll I'll hand you one. Um, but that'll do it. Let's wrap that up. You know, I I guess I, I left some notes that I didn't read. That I'll go through quick. I feel like I already kind of went through them. Um, why Texas State wins, why I think Texas State will win. Home crowd, I think that's going to play out. I'm really, I'm trusting these Bobcats. I think they're going to show out. Uh, I know it'll be it'll be tough for everyone involved, not just students who have class, but alumni who have work the next day. Um, but I believe in this home crowd. They're going to show up and show this show this Big 12 team how, how we do it in, in San Marcos. Uh, I think McLeod's experience will outplay Leavitt's. Uh, Leavitt is very talented. High praise from DJ Kenny, but McLeod has a lot of experience. And in a big moment, like last week, showing what he can do against the Blitz, get that ball out real quick. Uh, when the moment wasn't too big for him. McLeod's been there and done that. So I, I think he's going to have that experience edge over Leave It. Um, if they were to lose, and of course, the trenches. You win the trenches. I mean, that's what that's every game. So that's kind of why I glossed over it before going on to, to bad things that I don't want to happen for the Bobcats. But yeah, you have it's going to be tough in the trenches. It's going to be a huge offensive line for Arizona State, and it's going to be a, a huge defensive line. So both sides are going to have their their day full. And I'll tell you, that's how you're going to stop Scadabo, that running back they got, two hundred and some odd yards last game against Mississippi State. Like that's the scary thing about Arizona State is is they were able to win that game with sixty four yards passing against an SEC opponent. So this is a this is a real deal team. This is no joke. Uh, what will lose the game for Texas State? It's kind of the same as what I had for last week. Penalties. They did a great job of cleaning up those penalties this last game against UTSA. Have to do the same thing against Arizona State. It's a formidable bowl opponent. So you are going to have to be as clean as possible throughout that game. Turnovers, forcing and giving them away. They did a great job of both last week, not giving away too many turnovers. They didn't have that McLeod interception, but they forced them on defense, which was big. Going to need to do that again. Opportunistic. Figure you got to... Uh, you got to steal some points from this team if you're going to get that win. And this defense, it's got to get that pressure. We've seen it the first two games. It's gotten that pressure, and it's worked out for the Bobcats. has to happen again, and this is going to be probably the best offensive line they've faced yet. Uh, you know, from what I've seen on tape, it looks like it. it looks better than UTSA's and Lamar. So uh, they've got to they've got to really, really lock in and block this tough pass rush from Arizona State. 
that'll do it. Let's get to Reese Largent. Reese Largent, fantastic intern for win now or get bent. We have, we have activated him this year. Make sure to give him a follow on Twitter. He's going to be in the press box again for this Thursday game. I'll be on the sideline taking pictures, seeing if I get a little better at that. We'll see. Maybe we did some practice, you know. I've talked to some, some photographers who know more than me, and they say it's a gear problem, you know, my gear. That's how you know I was talking to someone legit because they had the right lingo. It's not a camera. It's never a lens or any of that. That's your gear. It's a gear problem. It's not me. It made me feel, about, oh, I just need better gear which means more money, which, you know, probably going to stick with the same camera, at least for now. We'll get a few more of these sponsors and maybe some Patreon subscribers. Patreon.com slash win now or get bent. Go check that out. Reese has been getting in there, in there doing some stuff. I'm going to get in there and do some stuff as well. Maybe I can start some photo galleries for these great, great pictures that I've been taking. Uh, WNOGB.com. Check out our merch site. I'm wearing the sicko shirt as per usual. I love this shirt. Uh, check it out. We've got shirts like that, mugs, sweaters, lots of great stuff for you. So go check it out, WNOGB.com. Check out our YouTube channel, Win Now or Get Bent on YouTube. Like, subscribe, comment. Any of you sign up, any of your Roadrunner friends? The right answer to that is I don't have any Roadrunner friends. That's the correct answer. So I'll, I'll accept that if you hadn't. Check us out on Twitter at, w, oh, at Win Now or Get Bent on Twitter. On Instagram, we're at WNOGB. I should probably make that uniform. May need to switch that out. It's me uh, thinking it out live on the fly. But, but check out our Instagram. I'm going to start doing some stuff. I'm going to start posting pictures on our Instagram from the games and, and start giving you some more behind-the-scenes type stuff to, to grow us there because that's one place we are definitely lacking is on Instagram. And, you know, I'm not a – as social media has done a lot for me in my career, but at the same time, I also – I just, you know, sometimes I, I just need to take a good break. Too much social media can be bad for you. But thank you to First Lockhart National Bank. Thank you to McNabb Real Estate Company. Uh, and thank you to TGC LLC for sponsoring this episode. And Chilsey, of course. Look for those koozies on Thursday night. The Wizard, Zachary Webb, our great producer, making us look great. Check out his cinematic recap. The numbers have been fantastic on those. And I know that means a lot, a lot to Zachary Webb. It means a lot to me as well. It means a lot to all of us. But he puts in so much work on these videos. He turns them out on the fly, gets it out quick. It's fantastic. You know, I I, I get a lot of credit for a lot of stuff that happens here at Win Now or Get Bent. And that it should, a lot of the credit should go to Zach Webb. He has elevated us. We have uh, we've been having a terrific season on, on all fronts as far as our numbers and the content we've been putting out, and a lot of that is is on Zachary Webb. So I cannot thank him enough. Shout out to the man, Zachary Webb, the Wizard. Look for him on the sideline. He's always in all black. He's trying to hide from y'all, but I'll try and point him out a little bit. Uh, and thank you, sickos. We'd be shouting out into the void without you. Like I said, those numbers have been awesome. You guys have been turning out. And it's, it's, it's been great. It's been done nothing but elevate us. It's elevated our profile. It's, it's allowed us to, to build a war chest and have sponsors and actually have finances to be able to do things and add to our team, maybe hire a photographer. Cause I'm, I'm failing out there, but thank you sicko. Seriously. I cannot thank you enough for your passion and tuning into all of this stuff. Uh, and I, I, I hope you'll, you'll take that passion and all that support and throw it at my guy, Reese Largent. Check out my guy, Reese Largent, coming up here. I'm real, real proud of this guy, this young man, doing great stuff. But here we go. Let's, let's get to Reese before we get to this game. Thursday night, be there, 7 p.m., UFCU Stadium. Be there, be there, be there, be there, especially you students. Use that, use that student ID. Get a free ticket. If you need tickets, enter our ticket contest, WNOGBKEF at Gmail. All right, let's get to Reese Largent. Win now or get bent. I am joined by a very special guest for this preview. It is our great intern, Reese Largent, a Tech State grad, a true Tech State sicko. Now he's been tapping away for us on our Patreon page, and now he's here on the pod. What's up, Reese? Welcome to the pod. Thank you for having me. How you doing, Kev? Hey, I'm, I'm doing fantastic. I just left a, a Texas State press conference. Uh, it's nice to, to get the feel of this game. It's a short week. You could feel everything was, was a lot more rushed. They had a longer practice. It's a, a very interesting week around here. That's for sure. This, this short turnaround. I yeah. Mean, yeah. That was. <laughs> oh, sorry. I cut you off. Yeah, no, for a, a third, like a Thursday night game, it's pretty rare around here, especially a primetime game and everything. I mean, 
how are you are, are you feeling good are you excited to go check out this scene on thursday night oh yeah no i'm i'm fired up especially after last week i'm glad glad we don't have to wait a full week to see this team play again because I'm, I'm i'm fired up to see him i hear that one we don't have to wait until saturday and then we also get a nice saturday where we get to sit back and just watch some games which is oh, oh back to back saturdays actually with the bye week right after so yeah, nice little yeah. treat for for us media folks over here well, well, Reese, like I was saying, this is your first time on the pod. I want to I want to introduce you to the to the folks a little bit. I, I mentioned you're a Tech State grad. Uh, you just graduated from Tech State actually very recently in August. So you're a, mm-hmm. you're a new grad, an alumni. Congrats on graduating. Okay. Jump jumping in the river, saw those picks. Uh, right. Tell the Bobcats about yourself, where you're from, and and why you're why you're so passionate about Texas State that you want to continue covering them even after you're you're done and being a, a student. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I'm from born and raised in Austin, Texas, um, just up by 35. Um, I started going in, going to Texas State in 2021. So I witnessed sort of the end of the, the Jake Spavital era. I was one of those tens of students in the student section back in the day. Um, but, you know, just like everyone else, I loved the campus. I loved San Marcos. You know, I I knew that if they had they had the right guy that this could be this could be the next big sort of big up and coming g5 program and kenny is proving us all right and so you know i love i love covering this team i love watching this team i'm i'm excited to see where the season takes us so you're from austin are are you a bob horn at all do you have a little longhorn love in you or is it is it all bobcats these days we gotta get to the bottom of that yeah, no, it's all Bobcats. I, I, all right. I grew. Up, I will admit, I did grow up a Longhorn fan, but just naturally, as I started going to Texas State, I just sort of, I, only, I feel like I only have enough room for for one team, and obviously, Texas State is is my is my my team. That's my school. You know, I take a lot of pride in that. That was your first big test as an intern, right there. I put you on the spot. I was like, what, "What's he got? What are you gonna say right here?" You but only have enough room for one. That's right. That's what you got to do, especially on a day like today. You know, I, I just left that Texas State press conference not too long ago, and in my head, I'm like, Thursday night game, prime time. There's gonna be a ton of media at this, right? There's gonna be a bunch of bunch of uh, TV cameras on that back row in that, in that team room where we do the press conferences. And there was only one Fox Austin. They're always here. Shout out to Joe at Fox Austin. They always, they always show up, but there, there wasn't a whole lot of them. And it's a, it's because of Texas. Of course, Texas state has to be good. The same year Texas is. So you gotta, if you're a true Bobcat, you gotta have that resentment inside you for, for the Longhorns. No, no Bob horns. This is a Bob horn free podcast. So I'm, I'm glad to hear you're, you're in that club. Oh, a hundred percent. It just sort of, you know, that, like you said, that resentment for Texas, it just sort of, it just, it naturally kind of grows in you, or at least in me. Once I started going to Texas state, it's pretty funny. They cast a big shadow and we want the sun shining on this place, you know? Yeah. Uh, so you, you jumped in the river, huh? You got to do all that. How was that? What was, what'd you do? Did you get a backflip in there or what was that? I, I did. Like, I just did a, uh, just a classic, classic cannonball. Um, and then a few of my my friends from back home came to to watch me graduate, which I appreciate. And so I jumped in a second time with them. They wanted to jump in too, so it was a good time. I love that the double dip, man. Got to do it. Yeah, it was you're great. Kind of, you're doing a you're doing a San Marcos double dip by being back covering this team, and you got to you got to cover them on on Saturday for that epic game that UTSA win, forty nine to ten. That's a score we're gonna remember for a long time. Uh, you, you got to sit in the press box for that one. Talk about that. What what was the scene like? Seeing that crowd was obviously what anything you saw when you were a student. But but your perspective, how did all that feel? Oh yeah, absolutely. It was it was special, man. It was super exciting. I remember at some point, I believe it was either the second or the third quarter. Once everybody who had sort of got to the gates late was actually in the game, I just like I looked up and I was like, whoa, this is a full full stadium. You couldn't see just a single empty seat. There was no, you couldn't see any benches at all. And all throughout the concourse, you could see there were st- people just standing. I think there were no more seats left. It was, it was a sight to behold. It was very special. I was, I was blown away. They meant, I, they meant when they said it was a sellout. 
Yeah, no fudge in those numbers. That was something that people mm-hmm. were like, "Was it really twenty eight thousand? Like, yeah, it was. Oh, yeah. It, could, it was oh, probably yeah. more, but they they'd stopped the counting at twenty eight. Mm-hmm. Although yeah, there I'm are, sure with all the all the people standing up, I bet they I bet they surpassed twenty eight thousand. Yeah, absolutely, and the people on the sideline as well. It, that was a, a terrific crowd. That's something that that if they can build upon and put together two consecutive sellout crowds for this Thursday night game, it would, that would be massive for this place. I mean, it would just be what it would, uh, the foundation that would lay for not just the rest of the season, but going forward and raising those standards and expectations around here. It's, it's seeing that crowd. It's just like, you know, this could be every week if they do it Absolutely. right. This could yeah, be every it week. Sort of, it definitely sets like a, a precedent having, you know, two big, like the biggest games of the season. Uh, at least out of conference for sure on campus because like we Texas State has not had an out of conference game against opponents like of that stature in years. Like I remember Baylor came in 2021, but I mean even that was wasn't like UTSA and it's not going to be like Arizona State. No, and you know you would think that even that 2021 one, I was even back then I was this could be close to a sellout something you know considering. Waco's not too far. It's a pretty big school. Maybe they'll travel, and it, it wasn't wasn't there. Definitely wasn't the same atmosphere at all. That's yeah, a game. That, that's a memory hole game. That's one of those. The broadcast was real bad, and there's a <laughs> lot of issues. That 2021 game is is that, that's what was so nice about 2023 last year. That Baylor game. It uh, mm-hmm. you know, we we talk about exercising the UTSA demons, but that was there was one there too with, with Baylor. I mean, yeah, it was 100%. even. That's it. That's a program where if you go back a hundred years, that Baylor Bears have beaten the Bobcats. I think it's the most uh, lopsided beatdown the Bobcats have ever had was at the hands of of the Baylor Bears. So there's a there's a little bit of of that too. But yeah, that that P four coming to San Marcos, it, it's pretty rare because it was uh, Baylor 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember we were at the press conference. I was talking with Brant Freeman. And it, I was like, you know, they, they played Houston here. And he's like, they weren't P4 at the time. That's very true. They weren't yeah. there at the time. So you have to go back to like tech in 2013. Mm-hmm. So over like yeah. the, over, over 10, 11 years, it, this will be just the third time. So it's, it's a pretty, a pretty big deal to get a, a P4 in San Marcos. Um, yeah. Especially coming off, off of such a big crowd. I think my biggest concern when I think about this game on Thursday for Texas state is, is a hangover game. There's so much emotion going into saturday uh it's such a quick turnaround even though it's not on the road which is a saving grace for this program at least arizona state also has a short week and they have to travel so maybe that evens it out a little bit but that's that's probably my my biggest concern is is that the the emotions were uh exhausted on saturday and there won't be a whole lot in tank for thursday but it's a a small concern i have a, a lot of faith in this team yeah yeah it definitely you know, the a lot falls on the shoulders of the players, I think. Like, the coaches can only do so much to make sure that the team, you know, puts puts that big win away and, and, and refocuses for, for Thursday. Because, like you said, it's a quick turnaround. So, I think, uh, um, you know, a lot of the players, it's on them to refocus. And, I, I mean, I think they will. They come from – a lot of them come from winning programs. Like, they won a lot at Incarnate Word. A lot of them follow GJ here. So – I have faith that they, you know, are focused on the goal and they, they, you know, like they always say, habits reflect the mission. And yeah. Think, yeah. You see it yeah. on the back of Brett Huth's shirt all the time, you know, and yeah, that's a big, that's a big guy and tend to tend to see that, that message <laughs> coming from a while. That's uh, you know, and it is it with the short turnaround. It, it is interesting because even talking with GJ Kinney today and they're like, today is Thursday. It's Tuesday, but they're like, today is Thursday. As far as like a game week is concerned, everything is just moved up. You know, tomorrow, Wednesday is going to be Friday for them. So that does add add a whole bunch of uh, interesting little caveats to this game, uh, the the quick turnaround. But then, of course, you have an Arizona State team that's rolling themselves. I mean, they're 2-0. and They're coming off they had that big win over Wyoming to start the season, and they had a, 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 a one-score win over Mississippi State as a pretty formidable opponent. They're they're looking pretty good. They're running that ball, but even when they're not using Scatabo, they have a really good quarterback with Leave It as well. I mean this this Arizona State team it, it's a it's a big one. You've gotten to dive in and and take a good look. You even put a good post on Patreon all about Kenny Dillingham and his press conference. But talk about some of your some of your takeaways about this Arizona State team. Yeah, yeah, it was 
kind of difficult to know what to expect because this team went through like just a massive, massive rebuild. I mean, they completely gutted the roster from last year and from two years ago. They brought in, you know, 30, 40 transfers both last year and this year. So it's a sort of, you know, DJ Kinney esque whole lot of transfers and um but they're they're definitely a good team. They've got a uh, you mentioned Cameron Scadabo. He was the um the running back. I bet a lot of Bobcats remember this when we were watching Incarnate Word um after Kenny had been announced as the head coach. Um, you know, we were watching them in the playoffs and they played that classic against Sacramento State that ended like 66-63. And uh, Sacramento State's running back for that game was Cameron Scadabo. Um, and so, you know, it's a guy that obviously GJ is probably familiar with. And um, But, yeah, they're a good team. They've got a, a very good offensive line. I think they're sixth or seventh in the nation in rushing yards per game. And, you know, they, they went in the trenches on the defensive side of the ball. I think they're second in rushing yards allowed per game on the defensive side. Um, so they're, it's going to be a – a strength on strength, I think, with with the Texas State's defensive line against their offensive line. It's going to be a fun one to watch. That's a great team. way to put it, strength on strength. I think that's exactly – when I look at this team, I mean, they both have dual-threat quarterbacks. They both have a strong running game. They both have run, uh, uh, offensive lines that are getting some good push. But on the defensive side, they have a formidable defensive front seven that has been shutting down the run. I mean, that's been – that's the story for both sides. Obviously, different levels. One's a Big 12 – p4 team and one is in the sun belt with texas state uh but it's still a, a strength on strength you know i mean even in your write-up with with kenny dillingham him saying like this is the best team we've we've faced so far which is pretty pretty big praise considering they played an sec team last week so they're they're not overlooking texas state despite being a smaller program which is pretty interesting to hear him say something uh uh that 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 much praise for for texas state yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, they're coming off, um, like you said, they played Mississippi State, an SEC school. Their next game is against Texas Tech, a, a Big 12 opponent. So, you know, I'm sure a lot of fans would have questions about whether or not they're sort of overlooking the Bobcats because they're kind of sandwiched in between two Power 4 opponents. But clearly, Dillingham is not not taking the Bobcats lightly this week. Yeah, you, you mentioned Cameron Scadabo and, and the connection with G.J. Kinney. He even took it a step further at the press conference today and said as soon as he entered the transfer portal, he was his first offer to come to oh, Texas really? State. <laughs> so he was, he was even trying to get him here, and he was bemoaning the fact that he has to play him again. He's like, I didn't want to play this guy again. So <laughs> that's a real good real good running back, and I'm sure you know a lot of the, the folks at home know, but he had over 200 yards rushing in their last game, just completely propelled the Sun Devils over Mississippi State. Which was which yeah. was interesting with G.J. Kenny. He was like, "This is the best quarterback we're probably going to face all year," and he didn't have to do much for them to get that Mississippi State win. Which him saying that about leave it, and then seeing what their offense did without even really needing leave it to to do a whole lot that that concerns me quite a bit. Yeah, that's a that's definitely a scary thought. If you know they they he at least proved enough to G.J. that he thinks he's going to be their best quarterback in there. They're running the their running back carried the ball thirty three times like <laughs> that definitely says a lot about the uh, the power that the the Sun Devil offense might have coming on on Thursday. Yeah, it's uh it's it's interesting when you when you look at this team with Leave It. Did you know a lot about Leave It going into this game from his Michigan State days or or anything like that? What's your what's your read on him? No, I'm really I really I was not familiar. I did not watch a lot of Michigan State. Um, mm -hmm last year but like you mentioned he's definitely mobile um in dillingham praised him a lot in his press conference he said he's a he's a good decision maker he, he keeps the offense on rhythm on schedule he avoids pre-snap penalties and he avoids mistakes which is what you need if you have a running game that good like all you need is a, a, a game manager which is not a bad thing to be a game manager type quarterback and um you know dillingham said that leave it just makes the right decisions like his only mistakes are just throws that he missed but he's throwing to the right guy and it's a whole different story if leave its mistakes are throwing to the wrong team <laughs> right you know it'll be interesting with tune me i'm probably going to say the name wrong but i remember you saying it and you pronounced it right tune me satellite the defense lineman for tech state from mm -hmm. michigan state he's going to be trying to to tackle his old teammate in the backfield 
Did I say his name true. right? How how did you say it to me the it's other day? Adelie, I believe it's Adelie. His last name. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I've been saying it the wrong Adelie, Adelie. So this is why this is why I need an intern. Everybody, you got to bring this guy <laughs> on and keep me keep me going. Especially your your great writing. You've been putting the the good stuff up on Patreon. I got to give that another shout out before we keep going. Check us out patreoncom slash get vent. Check out my guy Reese's work. Uh, you know, and, and talking a little more about Tech State in the press conference today getting to talk with with gj kinney uh, i asked him about injuries because we saw some guys go down I, I figured they would be a little bit more banged up but he said and it could be coach speak we'll see a little bit more on thursday night who's not dressed out but he said they're they're really healthy I asked about dominic ratcliffe and ryan nolan and he was saying that those those players are are doing pretty well that their health is 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 up so at least they're going to be somewhat at full strength not a ton of ton of injuries coming up for for this game because it's it's going to be one they're going to need all their guys i mean what, what do you think if texas state were to pull off this upset assuming it's still an upset uh, i gotta check the odds I'm, I'm, i think it's still two points arizona state somewhere around there um like that, yeah, yeah. It, it, what do you what do you think the bobcats would need to do to to pull it off Where, how would they get it done um i mean like i said before um they got to win in the trenches these are both teams that pride themselves in their their play on both the offensive and defensive line. Um, but I think more than anything, they just need to get the ball to their guys in space. I mean, that's how they beat UTSA. We saw Chris Don running free numerous times against UTSA. Um, you know, and Cole Wilson, obviously very shifty player in space and Ishmael Mahdi, who was, he was quiet against UTSA, but I, I don't expect him to be quiet, uh, for very long. Um, and so I think getting the ball to their their athletes in space because I think the these these groups of receivers and running backs that they have are are special enough to where you know it doesn't matter if the team is G five or Power Four or whatever they're they're hard to tackle they're hard to catch um, they're fast um, and so and then in terms of defense obviously they got to slow down Scadabo force them to throw the ball because even if leave it has been impressive, he's still a, an inexperienced quarterback going into a hostile environment. And, you know, we saw that the Texas state defense, they love to blitz. We saw they can rattle a quarterback last week with Owen McCown, you know, they got, they got into the backfield early and often and forced a lot of inaccurate passes, forced a lot of, of, passing situations where the defense can just pin their ears back and go. And that's what, that's what the defense wants to do. And I think if they can force Arizona state off schedule into more passing situations, I think that's how they win the game. Yeah. Cause even you mentioned it, we saw it last week with the young quarterback on the road, especially after a short week for, for Arizona state that didn't go well for UTSA. So you'd have to imagine Arizona state's thinking like, okay, Scadaboo just ran for what was it, 260 yards, something like that. It was yeah. he ran all day. And and he, caught, like, he caught an extra like 50 receiving yards. He, he was their leading receiver as well. Oh, <laughs> yeah, because they only had like 64 yards passing, and it was all him as well. Wow, that was just mm -hmm. the camp. He's got to be tired, you know. That's the thing. A five day yeah. turnaround. You got to think. Okay, we have a younger quarterback, not the most experienced guy yet. Maybe we're going to lean on our running game, and that may not be too favorable because he he could be worn out but i'm sure and like you said they they completely revamped their team so i imagine they have a stable of running backs yeah yeah i would assume so he's a power back as well so i'm sure his body is hurting a little bit at least a little bit so i imagine they'll, they'll try to spread out the carries a little bit more in the backfield this week yeah that's going to be the strength on strength note that you that you left is is i really the area that i'm going to be watching the most is tech state's defense Versus Arizona State's offensive line. I think that's going to be just two bulls in the middle of a ring. It's going to be a, a, a real battle in those trenches. It's going to be, it'll be a tough one because that's a good offensive line, but this is a real good defensive line for Texas State. I said it on the last pod that this could be the best, the deepest defensive line in G5. I mean, it's, it's mm -hmm. pretty, pretty remarkable how they can go three, four deep. I mean, we just saw Khalil Alexander is like, oh, he's, he might even be three deep on this defensive line. And he was graded out. It may have been PFF, somebody like that graded him and Ben Bell as two of the best uh, defensers, defend, defensive players in the nation last week. So, I mean, they even have guys three deep on their roster going in there and making that kind of an impact. So 
it's a deep defensive line, but that offensive line is good. And I, I think that is that is where the real battle is going to be. And, you know, and usually when you hear a trenches battle like that, you think it's not going to be a very high scoring game. You know, it, it, that's that's kind of my impression, my initial impression. How are, how are you feeling about how this game's going to going to play out? Yeah, I mean, I can, I really I can see it going either way, but I think I'd lean more towards a low scoring game um, with the the strength that both teams have in the defensive front and a shortened week. I feel like really favors defenses because offenses just don't get as much time to to scheme up certain plays that they'll see against different looks. So I imagine there's going to be you know, numerous plays where, where the, each team's defense sends a look that they, you know, they haven't shown on film and it's up to the offense to just react to it. So I imagine this game will be at least somewhat low scoring. I I think it'll be like in the, in the twenties. So not like a 10, seven type of game, but definitely not. I don't expect a shootout. Not an Iowa Hawkeyes score. Nothing, <laughs> no. nothing like that. You know, it, it would be great if this game if it was high scoring it being on prime time espn uh it would be just it would be a very tech state thing to happen if it did end up being a slog a 10 to 7 game when everyone's <laughs> watching you across the nation but if they can if they can put up some fireworks if they can do uh, i mean even if it's both sides if it's a a good battle both sides are, are putting up a lot of points and it's an entertaining game i mean that'll be that'll be fantastic to put that on a big stage like they could on Thursday. So I'm, I'm hoping it's, it's not, you know, I, I said this last one would be low scoring. I was like, it's probably going to be a low scoring affair against UTSA. One, team, one yeah. team didn't score very many points. There you go, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. There you go. Right there. No, it was, it was a low scoring for one side, not the other though. <laughs> you know, GJ, man, they had, they, when they hit 48 and in my head, I'm like, just go for two. You know, get that 50. Why not? Why yeah, not? You yeah. know, what's the difference between 48, 49? Just go get it. Um, no, that was that was a lot of fun. But if they can put up a performance similar to that, where it shows that this program is is legitimate and they can they can uh replicate that great showing and do it uh, again later in the week would be would be big just for eyes on this program. And you know, I hate to talk about this early in the season, but college football playoff implications for a G5 team, it takes everything in that you got. It takes big Absolutely. wins, beating P4s, big crowds, all of that. It's going to play a factor because it's it's a selection. It's not like the top 12 teams are all getting picked. It could be you could win conference and win out, but if there's another G5 that does the same thing, they might get picked. So it's it's these little things that, that go into it and matter. And, you know, it, it, in those little things is the crowd. And that crowd was awesome. That student section last week, there's a lot of talk. They're going to try and get the Trident from Arizona State this week. <laughs> You know, you're you're closer to it than I am. You're in age. You're what are you, twenty two years old? Twenty two, yeah. Young man. I just want to pinch your cheeks, Reese. You're <laughs> a young little baby. No, uh, that you're you're a little closer to me. What do you think? If you were a student and you went out on Saturday and there was that crowd and your team did that beat down, are you showing up on Thursday even if you got class on Friday? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I'm showing up. I would show up like three hours early if I was so I would be they're ready to go um and you know they got to see firsthand that they they can affect the game themselves they can be i hate to be sound like an aggie but they can be a 12th man you know um and so we'll call them the 12th the 12th cat yeah there we go there we go we don't want any we don't want any uh copyright infringement yeah yeah but yeah and then obviously a, a p4 opponent they know it's going to be on espn it's going to be a blackout they're going to be handing out glow sticks like i think i i would expect we're, we're going to get a lot of students again and you know i i really hope so especially it being thursday it's such a funny thing and you know it, it, they say it was they didn't put it to thursday because of the debates i don't know if you if you're, you're sure you remember the mm -hmm. presidential debates were supposed to be here in san marcus and they ended up shifting that around and it didn't work out where it was going to be this weekend uh i, I feel like it may have played a factor in why they moved it to Thursday, but their the official stance is that ESPN wanted that one for Thursday, so they decided to move to that. But it does it does create um, a different scenario for fans, you know, even not just for the student section, uh, alumni who have jobs, they have to work on Friday. You know, you can't really call in because you're at a football game. Not not how it works. 
So that will be, that'll be an interesting deal to see how that works out. The fans coming out, but you got to imagine it's got to get close to a sellout, maybe not another sellout because it is that Thursday game, but it's got to get, it's got to get closer than what it was after, after uh, what they did last week. And if they can, if they can just imagine how great that would look if those stands were full while they're on ESPN. I mean, just it's more, more of that, that, uh, that great, great um, publicity that this program can need if they really want to separate themselves from other G5s. So I hope, I hope they show out and I'm, I'm confident. I'm confident. It feels like, man, it feels like this is one galvanized fan base right now. So let's, let's yeah, cross our fingers. Hope they all show up. And even if, even if it's not another sellout like last week, I will say this game is at what? 7 PM. It's a night game and night game atmospheres, even though, like UTSA was at three. It wasn't an 11 o'clock kickoff, but night game atmospheres are just different. You know, everyone's been, been itching all day to get to the game. They, a lot of people have had a few alcoholic beverages, you know, <laughs> people, uh, night, night games are just different. They're going to be loud. Absolutely. You just get a different feel. You got to turn on those lights. You know, it just feels different when those bright lights are on, man. It's just, it's a different deal. So it's, it'll be exciting because usually I don't love the night games on Saturdays because it'll, for Texas State, it'll be a 6 p.m. kickoff. And I feel like that's a real awkward time, you know, because if you're going to do it at night, you might as well do 7, 7.30, push it, push it into prime time. You know, we're, we're going to be up late. Let's just be up later. Um, that 6 p.m. kickoff, I feel like people would tailgate all day. They might tailgate a little too much, and they don't end up making it to that 6 p.m. kickoff. So that's that's another piece to it. Uh, but that being said, on a Thursday night, it's a different deal. It's a different night. Most people are they're not gonna be tailgating all day. Most of them will be working all day, waiting, sitting there behind a, at their desk at a computer, just itching, being like, you know, I'm gonna be at a football game tonight. So I, I feel like there's going to be there's gonna be a lot of that, and I hope so, man. This place. Needs it. Needs needs a big crowd. They can start piling up these big crowds all season long. It's just going to be so big for this program. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Reese, man, this was awesome. I can't wait to hang with you again on Thursday. We're gonna have a lot of koozies. You're gonna help me pass out some koozies or what? Oh yeah, for sure. I'll be out there. Good stuff, man. You know, we also we got to get you a good mic too, a good camera. I love the background setup you have. If you're watching our YouTube channel, win now or get bent on YouTube, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. You can see Reese; he's got his nice background. We're gonna get you set up, man. I'm, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna get you hooked up. You see, like, see this deal here? This little, this little uh, arm, arm thing holding, holding my microphone. That was the wizard setting it up. So, I'll put my head together with him because we got to bring you on more. I want to get you, get you talking on this pod because you've been doing great stuff on the Patreon. You were doing great stuff with Maroon and Golden before that. Shout out to those guys, maroonandgold.com. Uh, they, uh, you were doing awesome stuff, and so I, I feel like you coming on, you can you can really put on this unique perspective. You have a real analytical mind when it comes to to sports, football. I mean, I, I say sports because baseball as well. Your your mind with baseball is is real impressive, and I'm excited for what you can do here, man. We gotta we gotta make it look good. We gotta get that baby <laughs> face looking good on on YouTube for you, man. But I appreciate you jumping on and and doing this somewhat impromptu preview but I'm, I'm excited to to see you on thursday thank you kev i'm excited too man see you then